Hey there, friends. This is Bill McDonald here, the writing doctor and also the reading doctor for those of you that are transitioning to learning how to incorporate writing responses into your reading teaks and timelines and scope and sequence and such. I'm going to show you a sneak preview for those of you who haven't yet purchased the Crest online training in five parts that's going to have CR, constructive responses, the E, the editing and extended responses, the S, T, the short textual evidence responses, and how to merge that all together in one world that can work for you. So I thought today I would just basically use my hand to kind of teach you uh, a way, not the way that your students can use their own hand to remember a systematic checklist of things that they can do based on the draft rubric that's been given to us so far on the step-by-step -step process to make it through whether it's a multiple choice question, which will be 75% of the questions still, a short constructed response, which we'll talk about those briefly, a short answer, and even an extended essay response. So a one answer fits all approach that can work for your students. And so whether you purchase the Crest online training or not, this will be a free beneficial one for all of you. Just remember that in the Crest trainings, each one of the five responses, the constructive response, the editing, the revising, because that's going to be part of it. The short constructed extended responses, all of those different types of new responses for most of you, they're going to be anywhere between possibly three to six hours long in two hour increments and normally anything that's a three three hour training or more would typically cost you two thousand for me to come to your campus and so bunches of you have already purchased all five and so me doing those five three to six hour trainings and two hour increments is going to be like getting ten thousand dollars of value for 200 because when you enter when you click on four as the quantity the fifth one comes free so instead of having to pay 250 dollars you're getting all five crest online trainings for 200 dollars which i think is a great deal that I'm offering for the rest of June. The price will kind of double in July. You can download these recorded sessions to your computer. They'll be set out, sent out one week apart starting next Monday. And the order will be editing, since that's the basic foundation we'll call the, that the blue water that builds the plant when you water it. The revising, improving the content, as I just put my hand this way since it's a mirror image. The short constructed responses, the short answer responses and finally the extended essay now 
I think that everybody would benefit from all of them. And if you look at the explanation, the description section in Crest, you'll see wh how, why, and how each one can help you because everyone is going to be having to ask, answer, short answer questions in your tested subjects of math, reading, social studies, and science, even biology and algebra, except they're just going to be asking more of the two type responses, the short answer from all of the subjects of reading, because reading is going to have one 10 point extended essay response, which you'll be able to see how to do that using this hand guide that I'm going to give you. But the rest of you will have anywhere between seven to nine two point questions. And basically, I'm going to show you how to go from a red light to the green light by going through the yellow light. So let's take a look at the different kinds of questions that they can ask using my, my hands and my face. The question. What is the question? The question might use the keyword, what? Why? How? When? Which? Where? Who? And we'll make sure I got them all. Who, what, when, where, which, why, and who. Yeah, that's all of them. And so let's take a look quickly before I show you my hand. Where in the world did this guy get all this information from? Well, I've already released to you this past week what the state says can get you a zero, one, two, or three in the development portion. The development portion is the section over here. If you look at here, your development and organization of your response can get anywhere from a zero to a three. Your language slash conventions can get from a zero to a three. And what I'm gonna show you is is how can I start with one land and work my way to two land and three land in the organization development portion, what I call the DO of DOC, and then also start in one land and make my, my way to two land in the conventions portion of DOC, and you put those together, three plus two is five, so you can get a total of five points. So how do I make something very difficult and rigorous, easier to understand? So this is always, like I say, a way, not the way to teach it. So if you take a look at, this is a regular eight and a half sheet of paper, and I've written my hand tracing one of my graphic organizers. So I call it the WWE of expository because all of the uh, prompts say explain. And the first three letters of expository are explain. So information, informational text all of the samples from Cambian from third through 10th grade all had the word explain and informational responses. So you can remember the red light being the W, the yellow light being the W and the green light being the E and what we'll call the blue water being the other E. If you can only remember two letters of the alphabet, W, and 
try to make the E the way that you can see it here, the W and the E. W, W, E for expository that will help you do the best. So let's think about the red light first, shall we? Every question starts in zero land. If your students don't even think about the question, I turn this zero into a Q, it's going to be about a certain topic, a certain TEKS, what we call in Texas a, 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 a Texas essential knowledge and skill. But regardless of what state you're from, you're gonna get a question Q about a topic. And so that's very important to think of the question as the red light. And I said, what is the question? W, why is the question ending with a W? How does something happen? A time, when does something happen? Choosing, selecting amongst one or more multiple choices, which one or which ones are the right answer? Who and where? What, why, how, when, which, who, and where. All of those are what I call, the cool thing about them starting with the W is it works very well with my WWW. What is the question for my red light? Because I've got to tie all of this together the WWE has to work well to do on well on expository. So how do I turn a red light to a yellow light and get a one? Well, answer the question. 75% of the questions will be still in multiple choice online format. And they're pretty much gonna go with A, B, C, D is what I've been told. They're not gonna go with too many uh, unless you're doing it on paper, you won't see too many FGHJ responses like we used to see on all the odds, on, the, on all the evens, excuse me. You could get a short, a constructed response question. And so when you look at my folder, you see them all right there. Constructed response, multiple choice and constructed. Number one is the constructed. Uh, if you're doing an online test, it's ABCD. You're still going to work with paper for a while. You've got the A, B, C, D, F, G, H, J that you can use. I suggest you start using uh, text entry, string of text, a number, a word, a phrase. Uh, oh, that's it. Inline choice. Select a correct choice from a drop down menu. All in a line there. They're just right there together. The match table grid items to the correct response. Hot text, cite the evidence by selecting a highlighted text that's in a sentence or in a paragraph or an extended reading. So they, they're going to give you some choices and you just select the right one, which, which text, which phrase or words or sentence inside a paragraph will be where the evidence is. Multi-select. There's going to be more than one correct answer. Which one is the answer? Could be one part. And why is it the answer? Could could be the second part. Multi-part means what's the answer to A? And when you see the online practice, it shows you all of this. What's the answer to A? And because that's the answer to A, then how does that relate to B? Because it says basically that. The answer to part B is going to be dependent on which one that you get. So those will, will be an example, multiple choice. These last two here and some of these I noticed were worth two points and some were worth one. So if a multi -part, part question has three or four responses, because it's constructed type, you're still only going to get one or two points. Now above the red line, those are all just reading responses. Below the red line, 
it can be math or social studies or science, but you can also get one of those responses in your math, social studies, science, algebra. Uh, so let's take a look at what kind of responses you can get to get to one line and short constructed. Evaluate a given number of options, such as words, numbers, and symbols, and drag the response to an area that the student thinks it belongs. So kind of drag and drop, move that response over here to that spot. The hotspot, select one or more areas on a graphic as the response, such as a map or a picture. They're gonna ask a student for a certain area to click on. And again, it could be one point or two. If you have to click on two areas, then it's worth two points. If you have to click on three areas, it's worth two points. Graphing, graph responses, including a bar, a point, a function graph, or any solution sentence. And the last one, the students will enter an equation or an inequality. So all those are different ways to answer the question and get one and sometimes two points to go from the red light to the yellow light. The short answer, what is the answer to the question that typically starts with one of those W's or ends with a W using the word how or in the extended essay question, the first bullet says, clearly state your central idea. So that's called a central idea statement. Middle school, clearly state your controlling idea, a controlling idea statement. High school, let's say clearly state your thesis, thesis statement. So you basically want these three sections that are gonna end up being worth two points or five points to be in complete thoughts. WWE, here comes the last W and then we'll get into the E's. The last W is the where. How do I get to two land? Where exactly in the selection are you going to go and what GPS location such as which line in a poem or play, which scene or stanza, which section, which sentence or sentences, which paragraph, because once you tell me that the location then you've got to go ahead and give me the evidence that you're going to use, which is the actual text. But remember that whatever you answer, it's sort of like Aquaman here, where he's got his little webbed hand to help him swim faster. They have to connect, they have to tie to each other. So in order to go from red to yellow to green, for a short answer and an extended response, you've got to be able to answer the correct W question about a certain topic. Short answer or extended sentence. Tell me where the GPS location is. Use your evidence. And then for to turn a two into a three, and make your essay go greener, you would need your evidence explained effectively. So they use the expression of your ideas. Well, the expression of your ideas is explained effectively what? Whatever example or examples you use as your evidence you have to go beyond just the words that are on the page and you've got to use your own wording and explain to the reader in order to get the three points on development. What do you mean by that answer? What's the who, what, when, where, why, which, or how of that answer? Explain it effectively. 
depending on which example, examples, or evidence that you're going to use. So how do I turn a three into a four? Well, as long as your evidence, sorry, your, your WWE is pretty good, then the only thing that's left is the E and the E. I divided it into two portions because the editing chart was worth either zero or one or two. So if you do really well and get the three points in development, then your fourth and your fifth point can come from two main areas. How strong is your editing in terms of cups, capitalization, usage, punctuation, and spelling? And the other portion, the other book, the other one that was in that section was the sentence construction. When you're constructing a sentence, it means you're like building a sentence. And one of the simplest ways to think of that is sentence boundaries. And you know, there's lots of ways to talk about sentence construction, but you know, changing the order of the sentence, the way it's organized. But one way that I want to focus on to keep it as an as an E is. What are the um, sentence boundary issues, such as make sure that there's no run-ons or fragments. And a lot of times your posters have a lot of cups with one S, but many of them don't, don't have sentence boundary or sentence construction uh, guidance in terms of double check that you have a subject and a predicate inside that sentence and so if your essay has if your response uh in your extended essay response is pretty good in grammar we'll we'll, we'll say possibly readable to fair you would get one point or if it's good to excellent, and you've also done the yellow light that responds to the red light, and given the green light, gone from red to yellow to green to greener to greenest, and then you've watered the essay once you're done with good editing by checking for capitalization, usage, punctuation, spelling, and then double checking that you have good sentence construction, that your sentence boundaries uh, stop and start when they're supposed to, that you don't have too many run-ons and fragments, then voila, you get the most points possible and have a great chance of getting a five. And when two people read your essay, you get five points on development, organization and develop, sorry, the, uh, the, the, the central idea, controlling idea thesis from two different people, the evidence uh, and where you're gonna, we're getting it from, if it's explained effectively, if you have good editing and sentence construction, sentence boundary um, examples, then you can get a five from two different readers and five plus five is 10. So if somebody says five and somebody says four, then you would get a nine. If somebody says, oh, I think based on all those, that criteria, that's very subjective, I'm gonna give you a, 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 four, a, a four and somebody gives me a three, then you would get seven points. You can get any combination of points from a zero and a zero, because you could have the best first finger, second finger, and third finger, yellow light and green light and greener light. But if your conventions is so bad that the reader can't understand it, you're still gonna qualify for zero points because it would mean that it's either illegible I, it's indecipherable I, or it's completely off topic. You didn't even bother to answer the question. So you would end up getting a zero. So do me a favor, please share this and encourage people to sign up. Um, I'm hoping that we get 10,000 people
to sign up because step one is the editing portion, the conventions, the grammar, that blue, those last two fingers. How can I build an entire extended essay response that would be in the form of a large paragraph or an essay if I can't even write a complete sentence that has cup, I, uh, that sentence that begins with a capital has correct subject verb agreement in form of usage and punctuation. So keep in mind that for the first six weeks, you can say to your students, may the ones and twos be with you. For the second six weeks, say, may the twos and the threes be with you. In the third six weeks, may the threes and the fours be with you. And that for six weeks, may the fours and the fives be with you. And hopefully by the time that test comes around and may you'll be able to, to, to get as many students getting those five points as po five points possible from two different readers as possible and do very well. So please like this video on YouTube. Uh, like it on Facebook and share it with any of your friends who are going to have to be teaching all subjects. And I don't think it should be just for tested grade. I think that all subjects and grade levels from pre-K and on should teach kids to answer questions in an open-ended format because we live in an open-ended world until we get into classrooms. Even if I can't write with my pencil, I can still ask questions using keywords such as who, what, when, where, why, which, and how. Those are easy questions that can be asked and pretty soon my students will graduate from their mouth come down out their arm and down their pencil and think I don't need my age right away for example as a third grader I don't need eight sentences at the beginning of the year but I might want to have eight sentences at the end of the year when I completely respond to an extended essay response so at the beginning of the year, say, let's just focus on your grade, third grader. Answer the question. Show me where with your evidence and explain with at least a sentence. Show them how to do that basic structure and build uh, that organization. We're gonna build on quality at the beginning and then we can slowly but surely throughout the year build to quantity God bless you guys have a great day and we'll see the, a bunch of you already on uh crest online training number one that will be released as of monday that you can record and watch at your own convenience all summer long and all year long and go back to it to kind of break down the portions and uh, kind of going to be scaffolding the entire crest of online trainings in an order that makes sense to start from the basic foundation and go from simple to complex on each uh, online training so keep that in mind look forward to seeing most of you uh, later on this week and for the next five weeks in the crest online trainings god bless